For nearly 2,000 years, the earliest known manuscripts of the Old Testament were copies of the Greek Septuagint. And for some, the lack of biblical manuscripts in Hebrew raised the question, how faithfully had the Old Testament been preserved? The answer came in 1947, from deep inside the caves of the Judean desert. The Dead Sea Scrolls discovered in 1947 have produced a huge amount of information on our biblical records because all the books of the Bible are found in the Dead Sea Scrolls except the Book of Esther. The Bedouin shepherds who found the scrolls belonged to a group of smugglers who routinely moved goods and animals between Jordan and Palestine. They brought seven scrolls to an antiquities dealer in Bethlehem. The Jewish archaeologist Eliezer Sukenik purchased three for the soon-to-be State of Israel, while another dealer bought the other four scrolls and offered them to a local Syrian bishop known as Mar Samuel. At the time, neither the shopkeeper nor the bishop realized their value, and Mar Samuel bought them for a mere $250. The amount we agreed upon. After the sale, he went on a mission to learn what exactly he had bought. He spoke with several Syrian and European scholars in Jerusalem, but no one was interested in his scrolls. He was told that they were not worth a shilling and that they couldn't possibly be more than 300 years old. Needless to say, I felt discouraged, he wrote later, but somehow I still felt they were wrong. It wasn't until February of 1948 that he found someone who understood the real value of the scrolls. Shalom. Eliezer Sukenik had heard about the bishop's scrolls, and through a mutual connection, he arranged to look at them. In 1948, Jerusalem was divided into military zones, so he met the Syrian messenger at a neutral spot, the YMCA, in an area known as No Man's Land. The city was under a blackout, so he had to examine the scrolls with a flashlight. And although he didn't know it at the time, one of them was the world's oldest copy of the Book of Isaiah. Realizing that the scroll was similar to the ones he had purchased a few months earlier, Sukenik asked for a meeting with Mar Samuel. He even prepared to mortgage his own house to pay for the scrolls. But the bishop never showed up for the meeting. Sukenik later discovered that Mar Samuel had taken the scrolls to the American School of Oriental Research in Jerusalem where he struck a deal to let the school publish the contents of the scrolls and split the profits. Thank you. For the rest of his life, Sukenik mourned the loss of the other scrolls. The Jewish people, he wrote in his journal, have lost a precious heritage. Sukenik died five years later, believing that the scrolls were lost to Israel forever. He had no idea that the person who would recover them would be his own son. I'm positive these are the same scrolls. Only someone with no idea what he has would put an ad in a newspaper. He must be desperate. I wonder how much he's asking for them. I don't know, but I'm going to buy them. My father. For the next month, Yadin negotiated through an intermediary. And on July the 2nd, an American banker named Sidney Estridge signed a contract to buy the four scrolls for $250,000. Estridge may have been the buyer, but the owner was the State of Israel. The scrolls were quietly flown to Tel Aviv, each on separate planes, and the sale was kept secret until the following year, when Israel's Prime Minister announced that the scrolls would be housed in a new museum called the Shrine of the Book. <laughs> 